Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the DFS experience for Wednesday, September 14th. We have an eight-game slate. Um, we have a very shitty pitching matchup, to be honest with you. If you notice, we're towards the end of the season, and almost every slate is a very shitty, um, you know, they have very shitty pitching matchups. Everybody's getting hit. The Grom got hit today. So I, I think that paying up for pitching now doesn't make any sense because you can be using some of that salary for bats to offset all of the all of the the um the hits that are gonna happen against these 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 pitchers. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, for example, you pay up for Cortez, you know he's gonna get hit by Boston tomorrow. So why pay up for why pay up ten K for Cortez and have them hang four, five, six runs on him where well, you can pay down in pitching and then pay up for a batter to give you more fantasy points. You see what I'm saying? So my point is me, I'm not paying up for pitching. If you wanna pay up for pitching, if you believe in your heart that some of these spend ups have what it takes to get you to the promised land then you know what by all means enjoy you know what I'm saying but me I'm good I don't feel great about paying up for Corbin Burns against St. Louis St. Louis have been one of the most consistent teams all year one to eight one to seven one to eight depending on who they put up put out there and you want to know something with, with, with St. Louis when they get on base the hits keep coming we all know that ain't rocket science you don't need metrics for that you know what i'm saying so corbin burns to me at 10 5 doesn't look like something that's happening we could take a peek at him though see what he's been doing he's good we're not saying he's not good but do we want to pay 10 5 for a pitcher going up against st louis i don't know last five games 45 he put up a six against st louis I'm sorry, he put up a 6 against Arizona, he put up an 8 against Pittsburgh, and he put up a 1 against LA. And these are fantasy points. Let me say it again, let me say it again, let me repeat it. He put up a 45 against San Francisco, he put up a 6.8 fantasy point production against Arizona, he put up an 8.1 um, fantasy point production against Pittsburgh, and a 1.5 fantasy point production against the Dodgers. Do I need to continue? Corbin Burns is off the table. Cortez, not playing Cortez. Rasmussen, he's been good. good. Um, last five games, 34, 27, 27, 17, 33. Strikeouts, 10, 4, 9, 8, and 7. Earn runs, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 1. Last five games. I think you find your winner right there. Toronto, they strike out a lot. Toronto is a very dangerous team, but they also strike out a lot. If I'm paying up, it's going to be for Rasmussen. You know why? Because numbers don't lie. Wainwright, I think Wainwright got smashed in his last start. If I'm not Let's check. Absolutely. Last five games, 32, 10, 14, 4, and a 1.9 against Washington. My man can even get to Washington. So I don't really know. You know, Milwaukee's a little bit hot right now. So no Burns, no Cortez, no Wainwright for me. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? That's a personal thing. If you want to play Wainwright, if you feel he's going to get to Milwaukee, you know, enjoy that. But me, I'm not going to do it to myself. Because I play DFS to win. Um... David Peterson against Chicago. Chicago's been hitting everybody too. That's another thing. Chicago even hit the Grom tonight. Hung three runs on him. So, you know, we want to be careful with Chicago. 12 fantasy points, 12 fantasy points, 29, 10, and 20, 21. He's been serviceable, but man, if, if they lit up, if, if they could hit the Grom, what do you think they're going to do to Peterson? I don't know, Sunny Gray. I, I always like. I feel confident with Sunny Gray, and Kansas City has cooled off. Last five games, Sunny Gray, 35, 17, 13, 4 against the White Sox, 
and then 18 against the Yankees. I like Sonny Gray. Um, I'm going to be honest. The rest of these guys... The rest of these guys, I'm not going to... They're not going to be in my contest. So there's really no need to for me to go through every single pitcher. This is not a... This is not a um, MLB evaluate evaluation. This is a first look video, and I'm only going through my player pool. I went through a few pitchers, and I'm not even playing half of them. So right now, I like Rasmussen, and I like Sonny Gray. That's the two that I like. My player pool is tight. That's it. If you if you want me to sit here and sell you dreams on these pitchers, I don't feel confident in. I'm not going to do it because I'm not playing them. If you want to pull up uh, baseballreference.com and, and, and do your due diligence and try to find some type of loophole to make yourself believe that they're going to be good, hey, you know what? They might they, they might have a good they might have a good night, but I'm not taking that chance. I'll just pay down, go mid tier, and then pay it for bats. That's what I'm doing. So with all that being said, Mr. Drew, come on down, 9600. Now you know what I like to do. You know how we do when we when we start this slate. We go down to the worst pitchers and we, we pick up the bats going up against them. So you have Arizona, you got Baltimore, you got Minnesota. Oh, these are all bad pitchers. So all these teams, these are great matchups. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna run to um you're gonna go check out the implied run totals and then you'll see and these should match. So you should see Arizona with maybe a four and a half to a five um, implied run total. Same thing with Baltimore and so on and so on. But I just, this is how I start my process. I, I, I check the pitchers first and then, and then I go to the implied run totals. But I always pick the team that I want to target first. Um, Arizona, Baltimore, Minnesota. I'm not playing Washington. There's a few pieces on Washington that are fine, but I'm not focused on that last man in. If I get in maybe um, Mensis or if I get in um, the kid that the kid that leads off, I can't think of his name right now. Um, if we get Lane Thomas, then. That's fine, but I'm not going to be trying to make a stack with Washington. Um, so Arizona, Baltimore. There's some pieces I like from Arizona. There's pieces I like from Baltimore. Minnesota, maybe Correa. I still don't trust them, even though I know they had a decent game tonight. Oakland's in play for me. The Dodgers are in play. The Dodgers are going to be chalky. Um, the Mets haven't been hitting. I might lay off for them. Tampa Bay, maybe Wanda Franco. Like he, it seems like he always hits. Um, and I, I think, and you know what? Every all the hitter, all the all the bats are, are viable tonight. Because, like I said, the pitching isn't that strong. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really focus on team building. Because, like I said, all the pitches are viable, all the the batters are viable. So, with that being said. For the video purpose, let's just get, um, let's just get some batters in. Alright, um, I think, alright, let's do this. Let's go to the outfield. Let's pick up, let's go to Arizona. I want McCarthy. I want McCarthy at 3,600. <clears throat> Corbin Carroll, I want, but I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold off on that for a second. Far Show, 4,900. I like him too, but I'm going to hold off on that. But I really want a McCarthy. So we got McCarthy going. I want Russman, but he's 5,100. Sean Murphy's in play. Sean Murphy's always in play. Let me just check my projection for, for my catchers. Andy Russman is my third highest projected catcher. 
he's 5,100. Sean Murphy's right under him at 4,500. Carson Kelly, 3,700. Carson Kelly batting in the seventh hole. All right, let's pick up Carson Kelly. So we're going to go Carson Kelly, 3,700. That's some salary relief. So I got Kelly. I got McCarthy. Um, like I said, the Dodgers are going to be chalky and expensive. I pass on them. Far Show is projected well for me. Aaron Judge is projected well, but he's 6,400. McCarthy is up there. He's in the two hole. We already have him. Carlos Correa, I think I want to play, but I always get him wrong. Keto Marte. I got I got you. I'm gonna do what I said originally. I'm gonna play the one off. Actually I'm gonna play I'm gonna play two guys from Washington. Cause they're always low owned. I'm playing Lane Thomas and I'm gonna play Mencius's first base. Let's just see what he projects for first. He is almost like my eighth and ninth guy. Let me see something. Joey Mess is 4,700. Okay, I got something better. I got something better than than Mess. We're gonna go Luke Boy 2,900. So with this build, us going with Rasmussen, um, Carson Kelly. McCarthy, Lane Thomas, and Luke Voigt. What happens is you could keep it the way it is. You could finish the stack. You'll probably have money left over, but you could literally insert Dodgers. You could play. You can now play um, Judge. My oldest, all you could play. You could play um, Trey Turner. You could play anybody you want. Josh Rojas. Marcus Simeon, anybody you want to play in two, three, in second base, third base, shortstop, and outfield, you can play because there's so much money left on the table. Being that Lou Boyd is 3K, Carson Kelly's 37, McCarthy's 36, and Lane Thomas is 27. So, um, this is how I'm going to go into this slate, something like this, and then I'll adjust as needed. But I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with an hour, a half Arizona and a half Washington stack. And like I said, Washington is in a good spot going up against... Wait a minute. Tyler Wells. Let's just double check something. The last five games, two fantasy points, eight fantasy points, five fantasy points, 14 fantasy points, and four fantasy points. Giving up one run, four runs, five runs, three runs, and three runs. That's that's who Washington is going up against. So let's see what happens. Let's go to FanDuel. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, and thumbs up. And like I always say, if you want my exact lineup sent to you right before lock, check out my Patreon. Link in the description. Um, pitching. Corbin Burns at 11K, Cortez 96, Adam Wainwright 9, Rasmussen 88, I like that price, Sonny Gray right under him, 87, I like him also, Dane Dunning 8K, Dane Dunning 23, 3, 24, 16, 34 fantasy points, last 5 games, um, no one quality start, last 5 games, I'm sticking to my, my two pitches. It's a eight listen, it's an eight game slate. There's two pitches I'm playing on the eight game slate. That's fine with me. You know what I'm saying? I don't trust no one else. Um Let's pop in Rasmussen. Um my catcher, first baseman. Let's do this. Let's start with McCarthy and work our way up.
McCarthy's 3700 so that works for me so we got 3700 for McCarthy um Carson Kelly I don't think I have to play Carson Kelly on FanDuel um Varsho is 700 he's too cheap Varsho 3700 batting in the fifth hole too cheap Corbin Carroll Corbin Carroll six zero twenty one twenty four nine six six he's a good hit he's been hitting well he's he's seeing well um do I want to do a three man Arizona stack I'm probably gonna keep it to two on each site because I know they're gonna be chalky Arizona's gonna be chalky I'll tell you that right now um Baltimore's in play. Let me see something. Um, Far Show, McCarthy, Joey Gallo. If you need value, Joey Gallo's 2100. Santander, 2900. Kepler, Ballinger. You know, now that I think about it, maybe some cheap Dodgers. The Dodgers at the bottom of the order, because the, the Dodgers will be popular. But if you put in the bottom of the order, they'll probably be low on. So that you know, today will be a good a good day to play um, low on Dodgers or the bottom of the the bottom of the um, order, because everybody and their mothers gonna be playing Bats, Turner, Freeman. And if you want to sprinkle some of those guys in too, you can. You know what I'm saying? I'm never, I'm never scared of chalk. I just get different elsewhere. You know what I'm saying? Um, Freeman is my highest projected. F Freeman is my highest projected first baseman. Mookie Betts is my third highest projected um, outfielder. Do we play Betts and, and Freeman today? Do we? Um, you know what? Let's do it. Why run from chalk? They're chalk for a reason. Let's do Freeman. And then we'll do, do, do Trey Turner or Mookie Betts. Trey Turner. So Trey Turner projects well. Projects just a little bit better than Mookie Betts, but like I said, it's a touch better. Let me just see the price difference. Forty-one, so it's a hundred difference. And there's a ton of outfielders, and there's a handful of shortstops. Let's do um, let's do Trey Turner, forty-one hundred. That leaves us with twenty-five hundred left, and there's more than enough value. So I think that I think this is how I'm gonna go into the battle. I'm gonna go with Rasmussen. I'm gonna go with I'll I'll start with two Dodgers. Maybe I'll continue with two more cheap ones. We'll see. Two two Diamondbacks, but I I like Varsho and McCarthy on any slate. You know what I'm saying? I like Carson Kelly also, so the fact that they have a good matchup is amazing. And it's a whole game stack because they're playing each other. So um you know, that that always works if they get into a shootout. Well, listen, this video has been long enough. Thanks for watching. Hope the video helps you. And I'm out of here. I'll talk to you guys later. Ciao.